Hey guys, welcome to BP, the Bible Perspective. God told Lala Jenkins that she would be married in 2023. Well, it is now 2024. Did God lie? Now, before we get into it, please like and share this video and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. Um, I'm doing a follow-up video uh, to Lala Jenkins. Now, there is, in the Christian world, in certain sectors, okay, a mess where you have a group of people that are hyping themselves up by heaping these grandiose titles of prophet and apostle. Now, I'm, I, I'm in my 60s, so I can tell you, and, I, and I've been a Christian since I was a teenager. And people were content uh, to just be called pastor or evangelist. And, and then all of a sudden, the wave came where people started uplifting themselves, heaping on these titles. Pastor and evangelist was no longer good enough. In fact, uh, can you even cite today a person calling themselves an evangelist? Okay. But mostly you hear these people calling themselves apostles and prophets. And for some, that's not even good enough. Now it's chief apostle and master prophet. Uh, I wonder how far up they would go. You know, super duper duper chief, right? Ex chief, whatever. Chief with all caps or master prophet. You know, superb master prophet. It is ridiculous. In the meantime, the problem, of course, is you're cheapening God, you're cheapening his name and you are devaluing his word. And so one of the things that caught my attention was Lala Jenkins who calls herself a prophetess. And, as you, and this is what caught my attention, her many thumbnails, pretty much every one of them, which says, God said. And of course the meaning behind that is, God told me to tell you, thus God said. And all of these things here, God said, God said, God said, God said. But one of the things now that I am questioning, I did some videos on this, challenging the fact that God told her anything, anything outside of her reading the Bible, but that's not what she's going after. She's, when you look at her videos, her videos basically says, well, God told me to tell y'all this. Now, here is the, the shocker. If you read your Bible, you don't need whatever she's claiming that God said, because basically she's telling you God said and everything that you can find just by reading the Bible. You don't need her telling you that God told you to read thou shalt not steal when he's already told us in his word, thou shalt not steal. And that's why I say they do these things to hype themselves up because she has a great following and there is a great following of people who follow these kinds of prophets. Well, let me show you something before we keep continue on. This is Psalm 138 and 2. I want to read the last sentence. He says, For you have magnified your word above all your name. Now, my point is that when people then hype themselves up by using these words, making these grandiose claims that God said, you cheapen that, you make that of no value. Now in, her, the, in, in the year 23, she not only said that God said she was going to get married, but then later came out into the video, which said, not only that, but God, <laughs> okay, God, uh, even pointed her out the husband, who her husband was going to be. And so the video I'm going to play, I'm not going to play all of the video. It's still up. You could go to her YouTube site and you could uh, 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 play that. In fact, if you just probably Google Lala Jinka's husband, it's going to come up. But 
What was so odd, and this is what you see with a lot of these so-called prophets, were that God is just a flim-flam man. So on the one hand, you're going to see that God is going to tell her, hey, Lala, I got some great news for you. You're going to get married. Oh, okay, okay, God. And then she's going to claim that she is, I went back to, you know, doing my thing, ministry and all that kind of stuff. And then around May of 2023, God came back and tapped her on the shoulder and said, hey, remember that marriage I told you about? She go, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Guess what? Here's the dude. Here's who you're going to marry. And then now, okay. <laughs> all right. Do I believe any of that? Absolutely not. Because now we are now have flipped over into the year 2024, and we haven't heard a peep from prophetess Lala Jenkins. Now, some of the comments people say, and I expected them, because you always got people who would defend these kind of ministries. After all, that's why they follow them. That's why you will follow a Lala Jenkins. You would look stupid if you're following someone you know to be a false prophetess. So what do you do, though, when her prophecies don't come to pass? When you go on defense mode, you start making up stuff. Well, maybe she got married in the spirit. Or maybe, and this is probably the typical comment that I received, well, maybe she got married. Maybe she's on her honeymoon right now. Okay. And I would I said, look, I'm going to tell you, when I challenged her God told her she was getting married with you. I said, well, okay, I could be wrong. She could be married right now. She could be, she could have secretly got married. She could have ended her women's conference, which was around, what, December 9, 1915, right? Which again, no announcement of the marriage, but she could have secretly then went on her honeymoon, got married on the honeymoon. That's possible. Let's acknowledge that. I don't believe it. And let me tell you why. Why would God tell her in May and June that she's getting married, actually go back to um, uh, um, year 22. At the end of 22, God told her she was getting married. And then why between like in May and June, would she tell her audience that God told her she's getting married and then tell her audience, not only did God tell her, but God revealed her, but I'm not going to tell you who he is. Now, that's probably one of the smartest things she has done because she's been really wouldn't look like a fool if she said, you know, hey, Joe Smo is my husband and Joe Smo come back and says, well, wait a minute, I don't know anything about this. Or the fact that he said, I'm just not interested, right? But my point is, God is going to tell you, I'm going to tell you how foolish these so-called prophetic ministries are. And all of them. Remember, there was, she also claimed that her friend prophet called and told her, confirmed that she was getting married. Then also her mentor, the prophet, whoever he is, told her. So that means all of them are wrong. All of them are wrong, right? So where is the marriage? Where is the husband, right? As I said, it could be she had, she had a secret marriage. I just don't believe it because if you're going to spend all of the time revealing to your audience that, you're, you, you, that God told you you was going to get married, and then all of a sudden now at the close of the year, you're not going to announce who Boaz is, you're not going to announce, you know, that when we're going to get married. You know, we probably could even settle, which I wouldn't have, that at least you announced the dude and the engagement. I still would have said you had to get married in 23 because that's the word of the Lord. Now, why am I going so hard at that? Because you said it was the word of the Lord. Now, if she had said, I'm praying to get married. I'm hoping to get married. I'm looking to get married. Okay, fine. If she had said, I'm praying to get married in 23, I'm really praying. No problem. But when you say God told you, well, so now, based upon what you said, God's a liar. God lied to you. Now, who do we believe? Well, y'all think I know the answer to that. It's certainly not Lala. But a lot of these false prophets build their ministries on these false prophecies. Let's share my screen here because there's a couple of verses I want to show. I'm going to show, again, I want to show you her testimony. And then I want to again interact with scripture. Here we go. Oh, let me uh, warn you all that we might, uh, 
get some ads here. See, what I'm doing, I'm going straight to the YouTube page so that I can go side by side with my scriptures. And um, 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 I, I admit there might be a better way to do this. I just haven't figured out how. Okay. But anyway, so if we do, I will skip through the ads as fast as I possibly can. But this is this is Lala back in, I believe, either May or June. All right. I believe June. But here we go. Oh, well, you know what? I got a thing right here. It says six months ago. So, uh, by the way, notice she has 59,000 subscribers. So, again, she had a, a huge following. I don't know if y'all can see that. I'm sorry. I forgot it. My picture in picture is in the way. But um, notice there's 526 comments. I'm not going to go through those comments. So, but some of these comments I, 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 I kind of gotten. But here it is. And this is what she says. I don't know if y'all can read that. But it says, hey, y'all, hey. In this video, I shared my update to how God revealed my husband video. So I'm um, not going to read. Come on, let's get into it as well because here's what she said. This is kind of an update, and this is what she's saying, how God revealed my husband. Now, that's the kind of video she had already said, which I'm not going to play, but this is the video. Um, Y'all can't see that, though. All right. Anyway, you can't. I, I'll keep my picture in picture in the way. All right, here we go. I was so focused on ministry. I was so focused on my channel. I was so focused on on singleness. I was just so focused on God, running after God. That don't believe it. I believe she was very much focused on getting a husband. But here we go. Was not even focused on a husband, and so the Lord came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. I'm telling you, I was I was living in bliss. Okay, singleness bliss. The Lord came out of nowhere and said, "Okay, again, I just don't believe that." See, because uh, this is the way that you have to kind of prop yourself up. Like I wasn't looking for it when you know you was looking for a husband. You've been talking about a husband for years. Again, so again, it's all of a sudden she's going to try to make it seem like this was God. So again, if what she's saying is true, God's a liar. God's a liar. It's time to get married. Okay. He told me at the end of 2022, he said, you're going to get married in 2023. Now, so she just called God a liar. God said, God said, this is what she said. Now, wait a minute. So let's kind of go to something here and let's, Look at what y'all. <laughs> All right, this is Deuteronomy 28. And uh, God, believe it or not, has a lot to say about prophets, false prophets, and their messages. Listen to what he says here. I want to first look at, because this is a prophecy really about Jesus, when you go back to verse 15. But I, I'm I want to look at verse 19. Listen to what he says. I will hold accountable whoever does not listen to the words that he speaks in my name. Now, this goes for pretty much any prophet. If God raises you up as a prophet and then you speak his words, you are, will be held accountable. Any words. Now, when you go back to all of those thumbnails that I showed you on her YouTube, she is saying, God is telling me to tell y'all thus and such. Okay? One of them, like it's like, God is telling me to tell you to stop watching TV. Well, that means if you didn't obey Lala's voice and stop watching TV, or, let me do a disclaimer, whatever specifically she said about watching TV, then God is going to hold you accountable because God's words are God's words. And remember, we read in Psalm that he, as he exalts his word above his own name. His word is extremely precious. And one of the reasons why God does that is because, first of all, he distinguishes himself as the only true God, the only God who speaks the end from the beginning, who speaks truth, who speaks righteousness. And now what you have is you have these prophets and these apostles who, again, cheapen God's word. Verse 20 says, But the prophet who dares to speak a message in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, 
or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. Now, the great new tears were not under the Old Testament. So, no, we're not advocating that false prophets die. We're not under the Old Testament. Okay, verse 21. You may say to yourself, and I do, how can we recognize a message that the Lord has not spoken? Now, remember, Lala says, I speak. Lala says, right? God told me I'm going to be married. Watch this. You may, when a, he says, uh, you may ask yourself, verse 21 again, how can we recognize a message the Lord has not spoken? Well, God gives us the answer. When a prophet speaks in the Lord's name and the message does not come true or is not fulfilled, that is a message that the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumably. Do not be afraid of him. Now let's go back to her myth. So watch this now. So here she says, God said in 2022, she was going to be married. Well, it is 2024. But guess what? It gets even better. And so I remember he said that and I was like, oh, that's cool. So I wrote it down and I literally went on with life. I I'm going to say this. Let me show you another reason why I don't believe that God speaks to her in the way that she's claiming that God speaks to her. Now, like I say, if you look at, uh, other than reading the word of God, just reading the Bible and go, oh my God, I didn't know murder was wrong. God just spoke to me. Yes, God spoke to you and said, thou should not commit murder. Okay. One of the things that when you read scripture and you see the interaction, whenever God came on the scene, God first had to arrest the fear of people. And then there was never no casualness with God. Oh, okay, God, that's cool. Okay, you're telling me to get married. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Really? That's, that's how you really would act if God came to you? That, that You're telling me that that's how you would react? All right. I'm, I kid you not. I literally was like, okay, let me write this down. And then I moved on with life. Okay, I got to put some videos out. <laughs> I got to focus on Bible study. Like, I got to focus on work. I got to focus on, I had, I had a lot going on. I was in a singing group. I was doing wedding planning. Like, I was like, okay, God, that's coming. But I got to focus on now. <laughs> and so I focused on. Really? I, I, again, I, just can't, I got to go back to that. That's how you really would react to God, God Almighty, his presence coming to you, or however God chose to reveal himself to you. Do you really think you would react that way? That you would just sit there and go, oh, just be so cavalier. Okay, God. Yeah, okay. All right, God. Ooh, do, do, do. Let me write it down. Okay, God. Really? All right. Uh, and then in May of 2023, the Lord said, hey, you remember, you remember you said you, I said you getting married. And I was like, yeah, I remember you said that. And the Lord said, well, here's your spouse. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. So you were serious? <laughs> you was, I was like, you were serious? And God. So this is, this is a conversation she's having with God. Wait a minute, you were serious about that, God? Since when was, do you think God was joking? Did you think God was like, hey, I'm just, I'm just playing with you. Really? Say again, uh, who is this God? See, who is this God? Right? And, and that's a whole nother kind of thing. How, <laughs> excuse me, the, the God that they're describing doesn't exist. The God that they're describing is not biblical. Because trust me, if God actually appeared to her, actually, she wouldn't have this kind of response. All right. Pretty much was like, yes, because this is your spouse. And so the Lord um, took me through a series of, of events of revealing my spouse. And so in May of 2023, I officially, you know, received the revelation of who I'm going to be married to. Okay. And so. <sighs> so God pointed out, that's the dude. That's who you're going to marry. Now I tell you, I tell the story because uh, again, I, I've, been a, I've been saved, you know, since 1978. So, um, and I remember going through in the 80s, I remember one particular sister I personally knew. Now, the, the, the late singer Carmen, some of you may or may not be familiar with him. He was 
pretty big in the 80s and in the 90s. He did some, te- you know, just, he did some good stuff when it came to music and stuff. And uh, he was out of Tulsa, but he he was an Italian singer. So he's very and a very handsome guy. So what I'm saying that is, uh, uh, you could tell not only could he sing very talented, um, he was a committed Christian. So he drew a lot of attention. But there was, I don't know how many women that God told them they were going to marry um, Carmen. What would it? Did God think he was Solomon? I, I, I'm being very humorous. But I knew one individual, such individual, who said that God said, oh no, God told me I'm marrying Carmen. And then she ended up moving to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he lived at. Well, <laughs> needless to say, she did not marry Carmen. So a very smart, and thank God she did not reveal the name and look like a bigger fool, okay? To look like a bigger fool, thank God. Okay, here we go. It's, it's, it's two things happening. It's two things that's been happening over this entire month. Ever since, you know, I did the video, um, there's, there's, two, there's, two, there's two things that are, that, are, that are operating simultaneously, okay? On the one hand, on the one hand, okay, I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Y'all, I'm super, I'm like, I just be like in bliss. Cause I'm like, and I know my spouse, like, I don't know, I don't know him, but I'm just like, the Lord has revealed. So I'm like, okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna stop it here. Cause I wanted to share a couple more scriptures, but she's gonna go on really to say that, um, well, you know, God, yeah, thank you for revealing my husband, but what about us? I've been getting along so great with just me and you, you know, and now you're going to bring this dude in our life. I'm thankful for it, but you know, okay. Like I said, I don't believe any of that. Okay. Uh, and trust me, um, now that we're in year 2024, that I disclaimer, she could be married. Like I say, I don't believe it because, uh, you know, as the year was winding up, she had, I think her last video post was probably about three or four weeks. She was also in the midst of a woman con- uh, a conference that I think she was hosting. Okay. So again, you know, did she announce her, did she announce her husband at then? Cause at that point we're only talking two weeks away from the end of the year. And my thing is this, if she's going through such extreme here to tell us, that God has revealed her husband. Not only is she getting married, but revealed the husband, whom the husband himself doesn't know yet as of this taping, this video, which is around June. Now, God told her in May. Okay. So why are you going to go through all of that and then come to the end of the year? You knew she, you know she would be putting this on blast. You know that she would have a gala wedding. I mean, it would look like the, the the wedding of the lamb as pictured in Revelations chapter 19. Okay. You, you know, it would be that way. But that's just my opinion. And I, my disclaimer, of course, is, yeah, she could have got secretly married. Maybe the man that God revealed to her said, you know, no, no, no. God told me, yeah, I'm going to override you, but God told me that we're going to have just a secret wedding and we're not going to tell anybody we're just going to go and get married. That is possible. That's my dec- this disclaimer. I don't believe it, but that's my dis- disclaimer. What I want to go to now is to say, I, I just want to look at a couple of verses. Um, now, I've showed you here that if it doesn't come to pass. All right, so this is um, Jeremiah chapter 23. And I want to read this verse. And, and, and notice what he says here. Uh, this is what the Lord of Hosts says. Now, the, the context of this, this setting here, he's rebuking the false prophets. Um, Israel, right, J- Judah and Jerusalem right now are undergoing the invasion of Nebuchadnezzar. They have not heeded God's warning. They have not obeyed God's commands to repent. So now they're being conquered. 
And yet, and still in all of this, the prophets are telling them it's going to be peace, peace. The, the false prophets. So that, that's, that's the context of this verse. But I want to show you a parallel here that we can draw from this. So he says, this is what the Lord says, verse 16. Do not listen to the words of the prophet who prophesied to you. He said, they are making you worthless. Now, I want to just look at it. They are making you worthless. People who follow the false prophets, they are. They, this is what they're doing to you. They, they, you. You swallow what they say. You do not think. And you even override the scriptures themselves. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. He says they're making you worthless. They speak visions from their own mind, okay? Not the Lord's mouth. And they keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you will have peace. They have said to everyone who follows the stubbornness of his heart, no harm will come to you. Now, one other verse I want to read from here. <laughs> Verse 25, and I'm just going to read one sentence here. He said, I have heard what the prophets who I have heard what the prophets who prophesy a lie in my name has said. Now this is this. I had a dream. I had a dream. How long uh, will this continue in the minds of the prophet prophesying lies? Prophets of deceit of their own mind. And then it goes on and he really lays into them. When he says through their dream, they tell one another, uh, they plan to cause my people to forget the name as their father, my name. Now, let me just say this. Uh, one of the verse two, look at verse 21. I did not send these prophets, yet they ran with a message. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. If they really stood in my counsel, they would have enabled my people to hear the words it would have turned their backs from evil ways and their evil deeds. Now, I would say one thing about uh, uh, Lala Jenkins. She has done plenty of videos telling the people to turn from wickedness and not go into sin and various sins. Okay. All right. Um, I want to do one more, one more verse of scripture here. And this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13, and listen to this, it says, if a prophet or someone had the dream, or, uh, had the dream, I'm sorry, if a prophet or someone who has dreamed arrives among you and proclaims a sign or wonder to you, and that sign or wonder has promised, that, that he has promised has come about, but he says, let us follow other gods, uh, which you have not known, and let us worship them. Do not listen to that prophet's word or of that dreamer. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Now, obviously, Lala's not telling anyone to follow false prophets and pagan dreams and I mean, uh, pagan religions and all of that. But here's the point I want to challenge. Notice what God says here, that this is a test of proving that Will you, do you love the Lord your God? In other words, do you love the Lord your God? If a, if a, if a prophet had the dream, a false prophet tells you something and it comes to pass, but yet he's telling you, let's abandon God. Let's follow somebody else. Now, God says, well, now, would you abandon God, his word, his established word, to follow that prophet? Now, I... I'm extracting from this to say many of La La followers, and I know because I get some of the comments, some of their clap back for me, that they will say, you're picking on La La, you're a hater, you're touching God's anointed, you're doing all of these things. And what is amazing to me is, and, and I will tell them, you are, a, you, you, you're following a, a false prophecy over God. In other words, God's word tells us plainly what to do in the case of false prophets. You come along and then you say something different. You are following God. You're, you're not obeying God when he says, how do I treat false prophets and their false prophecy? How do I treat them? How do I? But then you override God showing you really don't know, love God. 
you love more man. You love man's teaching. You love man's ways. And those three verses speak to what is going on today among these false prophets with these false prophecies. They speak their own minds, but at the same time, they speak to those who are following the stubbornness of their own heart. That's why you are uh, uh, would so, I, that, as I pointed out. You, you say how many subscribers she has. People love Lala Jenkins. But at the same time, do you love Lala Jenkins more than you love God and his word? And I'm going to say clearly you love her and you because you override, you're going to override the scriptures, what it says about her, over and above, over and above what God says. And that's the shame. All right, guys, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. I'll see you in the next video.